this is Dr. Lauren Lanu from Keene State, and this is a short video lecture on the topic of assessing genome assembly, um, particularly genome assembly from short read data. And this particular video lecture focuses on looking at your genome, your assembled genome, in the context of a reference organism. So really looking at, you know, specifics that are a little bit more biological than just the base metrics. So in order to evaluate how good your assembly is, you want to be able to compare it to another very high quality assembly from um, a similar or you know, in a perfect world, the same organism. And we call that a reference genome. So you want to ask questions like, is your assembly, does it show a genome of the same size as the reference? Is the GC composition the same? Are the average nucleotide identities the same or very similar? Is the Kamer composition the same? And I had mentioned Kamer Finder in an earlier or other video lecture. And are all the core genes there? Is the genome complete? And are the genes there in, you know, more or less the right order um, relative to reference genomes? So do the contigs line up um, appropriately when looked at comparatively to a reference genome? So how do you find a reference genome? Um, a reference genome is a sequenced genome that's from an organism of the same species as the one that you're studying, at least ideally. Ideally, the reference genome has been both finished and curated. In other words, it has been highly validated informatically and perhaps even in the wet lab to be sure that it is correct. Um, and this will help you to evaluate the quality of your assembly in multiple ways. Now, sometimes you have to make do because if you're studying an organism that is novel, there may not be an appropriate reference genome. Um, and, you know, that, that's a bridge you'll just have to cross when you come to it. Um, you, might, you might get around that by looking at um, multiple genomes that you collect from uh, isolates of the same novel species in an ideal world or looking at uh, reference genomes from closely related or as, as closely related um, species. So to find or choose a reference genome, you need to know what your organism is. So you need to know a little bit about its taxonomic classification. And um, you can do this using the tools that I showed you in an earlier video lecture. Um, and for example, you can use Kamer Finder or you can actually take entire contigs and blast them against the reference databases in the NCBI. Those are options in the blast functionality of NCBI. Or you can use local blast to pull out marker genes, um, as I mentioned earlier. But in any case, it's a good idea to have an idea what your creature is. Then you're going to go and look on the NCBI for a reference genome, and you're going to download it. And so where you find those reference genomes. There are a variety of resources or databases that host reference genomes. Here I'm going to mention the, the uh, area on the NCBI that's called RefSeq. So the font's really small, but RefSeq is shown in here as an option. So a moment ago, I just went into the genome area of NCBI, and I typed in Escherichia coli, hit enter, and I got this page. Now, if I keep drilling down into the RefSeq area, ultimately I will get into the area that contains the uh, FTP um, hosted information on a reference assembly for Escherichia coli. And I can use the wget command to pull any of that into a server like Ron. If you want to know more about the RefSeq database, you can take a look at it in the NCBI handbook at the, at the link there. So once you've got an appropriate reference genome, or perhaps several, because you might want to get a few reference genomes so that you can repeat these experiments and ask better questions and get more certainty in your data, um, then you're going to want to compare your organism's genome with the reference. And there are a lot of different tools and approaches to this. I'm going to show you the output um, that we have obtained from doing similar work um, from a tool that's called QUAST. And we'll be using QUAST hands-on in class in the near future. So one of the outputs of a QUAST report is you put in your, your genome of interest and you put in the reference genome and it will plot 
the, um, an index of the cumulative length of the contigs that are in both the reference and your host genome or your genome of interest. And it will show you in red the genome that you've got. And then the dashed line is the reference genome. And so in this particular um, image, I'm seeing that the genome that I'm interested in is about identical in size to the reference genome. And that's a good sign. Um, that suggests that I don't have contamination, which would show as the red line being above the reference genome. It also suggests that I'm not missing a lot of genetic information, which is what I would see if the red line was significantly below the dashed line. So I'm, I can use QOS to get a visual on a comparison of genome size between a reference and my genome of interest. QOS also outputs an evaluation of the GC content of your contigs in your query genome versus the reference. And so this is a really tight foot fit, and it shows that the GC, guanine and cytosine composition, is identical between my organism of interest, my new genome assembly, and the reference. And that's a good sign. If there's any sort of bumping or splitting, you know, or separation here, it suggests the GC composition is different. And that could mean that your organism is not what you think it is, or it's not, you don't have all of it, or it could also suggest that there's contamination with other organismal DNA in your genome assembly. There are a variety of tools online to calculate something called average nucleotide identity. Um, and this is a formula taken from the uh, Department of Energy hosted websites. You can use um, average nucleotide identity calculators that are hosted on their website. It's an open source area called KBase. And you can submit your um, draft genome in the form of your contigs. And then you can run it against a variety of their reference options. And what it will do is it will look for genes that are present in the data that you've submitted relative to the reference that you've chosen. And it will look along the lengths of those genes at the percent identity as normalized by alignment length. So basically it's asking the question, are the nucleotides in, is the nucleotide identity or composition in the, in the reference genome the same or very similar to the nucleotide identity in your test or target genome? And the closer they are, the more similar they are. They have to be more than 95% similar typically in order to say these are the same species. Genome completeness is another thing that for which, uh, another way that we can assess the quality of a genome and a genome assembly. So genome completeness asks the question, are all the genes present? And it, it can also address the question, are the genes where they should be in reference to the reference genome? So there are a variety of length-based metrics, and I've mentioned N50 in a, in a previous lecture. Um, it's kind of a crude measure, however, whereas these newer genome completeness checkers will actually go looking for a core set of genes in your reference strain and or strains and look for them in your new target genome and evaluate the completeness of the new target genome. In particular, there's a new tool that came out, um, I think in 2019 called, or maybe 2018, called Checkum. And it's been integrated into a variety of online platforms, but it's also something that, you know, we can have hosted on RON. And it looks for genome completeness and also will assess the contamination level um, in a genome. So the way that this works is the stuff up on the top of the workflow is that Checkum will draw from a set of reference genomes that are well annotated, where the gene information is well studied, and it will pull, pull from their particularly high quality control genomes that are then called trusted genomes, and it will build a genome tree. And from the genome tree and the trusted genomes, it will derive a set of suitable marker genes for a given lineage, okay? And the lineage that Checkum will use will be based on the identity of your potential genome, your target or query genome. So that lineage information will be pulled in to a set of information that is then used to, to compare against your 
your new genome. And you'll look to see, or Chuckum will look to see, are all the genes present? And are they all there in the same order or locations in the test genome relative to other genomes in that lineage? It'll also compute things like GC composition and N50 and so on. And it'll give you a host of data on the other side. I think this tool's going to be used more and more. It's already getting integrated into a lot of online platforms, as I mentioned. So this is definitely one that we're going to play with in class. Finally, in order to assess your genome, another approach can be to do comparative genomics. So this figure was generated with a, a program called BRIG, and it compares genomes from the bacterium Campylobacter jejuni, which is a very common cause of foodborne illness. This can, in some cases, be very dangerous foodborne illnesses. Each ring in this is a different genome. So this is more than just, you know, one strain versus one reference. Instead, it's like one strain of interest versus multiple references. And all of these white areas show sequence that is in the test genome, which is on the inside, that are not in the references. And so anytime you see um, areas like that, if they're real, and there are a variety of approaches for verifying that, you might then ask the question like, well, what's the difference? Is there some genetic confirmation or uh, some genetic elements that are in the genome I'm interested in that are not in the reference genomes that contribute to a, bi a biological function of interest? For example, are they involved in virulence or do they tell me something about horizontal gene transfer that's happened recently? And this is a really powerful tool for assessing genomes as well. This kind of tool can also show you if in your new genome, there are areas where the assembly has gone wrong and a sequence or a set of sequences have been flipped relative to the order seen in all the comparators. And that would suggest something that's called a misassembly might have happened. It might also be that it's a real thing in that strain, but it's something you'd have to investigate further. These are just some of the tools and approaches that you can use to ask what the quality of your genome is in the context of its taxonomic um, and functional abilities or characterizations. And that concludes this lecture.